Hello, I'm Roger Gosnell, director of Scooby-1 and Scooby-2, and these are the deleted scenes. Since they're deleted scenes, uh, nine times out of ten, they weren't all the way finished, so much of the animation, particularly on Scooby, that you'll see is, uh, is in its roughest stage. And uh, it's kind of interesting because you get to see how Scooby looks in the early stages before he's all finished. A lot of the performances are pretty close, but the, his actual look doesn't have fur, and he's a little thin, obviously. Now, Matt's job in this movie is really tough because just picture him acting opposite absolutely nothing, and you'll have an idea how tricky it is for him to do his job because he, he's always referencing Scooby, and uh, Scooby's never there as we're shooting. This is a little moment that we wanted to get in the picture. We, as we sat out on Scooby 2, we wanted to give him some, as many sort of dog-like moments as we could. And this is one of the dog-like moments that we really liked, but just uh, couldn't figure out a way to keep it in the movie. We, we felt like we needed to move on with the investigation and move on to the next thing. So. This is the museum robbery scene, which was one of my favorite scenes in the movie that unfortunately we had to cut. Is one of the uh, these are the various costumes that uh, get stolen and turned into monsters. There's the rarely seen bubblegum on the shoe shot. That's one of my favorites, and I was very sad to see it go. These two actors did a great job. I was uh, I was sad for them that we had to cut this scene. We ended up cutting the scene because it came at an awkward time in the movie. Uh, it came right after Velma's red outfit moment. We'd been away from Shaggy and Scooby for a long time and been away from the investigation for a long time, so it felt like we needed to sort of get back to them outside the faux ghost. Come on, baby, let's get a shark, baby. Come on now. Come on. Ah. You want a shark? Come on, man. Let's do this. This was the 10,000 volt ghost's uh, introduction into the movie. We had an interactive lighting gag on the stage that illuminated the walls, but all the electricity and lightning bolts you see on him are animated. The sparks you see on the door are practical sparks you did on the set. And Black Knight is pretty much as you see, and we added the green glow, but that's uh, pretty much how we shot him. He's a practical monster. One of the rarely seen static uh, electricity jokes in movies. <laughs> we had to, of course, multiply it times 10,000. That hurt. This is the Black Knight explaining what's going to happen to the costumes. We felt that this was sort of self-explanatory when the gang finds the monster hive and we see the costumes actually turn into monsters. This is one of my favorite character moments in the movie that unfortunately we had to cut. Like the Red Sea, it's me! We had to cut it because we felt like it was just time to move on with the story. We'd, had, we'd been away from the story and the investigation for a long time, and it felt better to sort of get the guys to the bar and get them questioning old man Wickles, although I do really miss these character beats. There's Scooby. Scooby has a day glow wig in some of these shots, you'll notice, and that's a, a weird phenomena that Rhythm and Hughes sort of never got to the bottom to. They, they didn't actually know why it was happening, and uh, fortunately we ironed it out by the time the movie was released. You don't recognize my brother and me. We are the world famous with side pickle aculas. 50% pickle, 50% tracker. That's actually uh, the one, one of the scenes, one of the few scenes in the movie where we have a suit performer playing Scooby, and we've just animated Scooby's head over the top of the performer's head. Uh, she was actually the dancer that did the dancing in the uh, dancing sequence as well. Uh, it was just going to be too cumbersome to try and animate a, an entire outfit in addition to Scooby, so we went with a suit performer in this sequence. There's a never-before-seen whack-a-mole with your main character's heads on there. I sure hate to see the urinals in this place, dude. <laughs> this is just a quick little piece of Scooby that we tried. Uh, and it sort of never got a big reaction with the audiences, so we, we thought we'd move on, but I, th I thought it was a fun piece to show everybody. That's Scooby trying to imitate Patrick, who was... Uh, being a little schizophrenic the last time they saw him. This is part of the sequence where the skeletons chase Scooby down the hill on the trash can lid. The reason I wanted to show it was because it's so primitive, it's so early on, and uh, I think, thought it might be interesting. We have here a 
CG environment, CG skeleton, CG Scooby. It's a 100% CG sequence as it is in the final movie as well. But it's sort of fun to see the skeletons in their very early stage. They're very sort of primitive. It's almost stop motion looking. It's very kind of charming. And that's a little piece that didn't make it in the movie. This is a little sequence with the uh, two skeleton guys in Velma, where we had a gag where one skeleton is always forming the other skeleton into different things, and here's one where he's uh, formed into a little skeleton machine gun, a little skelly gun, we would call it. It's just, uh, unfortunately we cut it, it felt like it just was just one beat too many with the skeleton guys. We have an awful lot of action in this section of the movie, and it sort of never paid off, but it was really fun when we did it. This is one of Matthew Lillard's greatest performances in the movie that unfortunately is not in the movie. Here's a sequence where you can sort of see how he has to work on set. There's no Scooby there. He has to do every scene like that with Scoob. Me neither. Really, really nice performance here. Really sensitive. I just want to tell you, no matter what anyone else says, you've never been spectacular. We me. cut this because it came uh, very late in the movie. It felt like we'd had a lot of sort of sensitive beats with these guys and had sort of done this story, you know, a few too many times. Uh, we actually got uh, wrapped on by the critics a little bit for uh, for having too much character in the movie, which uh, was a surprise to us because usually it's the other way around. Okay. Here you see some early Scoobies. Uh, this is quite good animation, but his look is um, obviously not not near finished. But it's a really, really nice scene, great scene between these two guys, and I just, my hat's off to Matt for performing this well, um, opposite a invisible dog. Come on, let's go. Okay. Oh, my ear. Forty. My ear. Ruff, ruff. 